Uh, it is impossible to imagine what rock and roll would sound like if our next guest had never been born. Uh, along with Elvis Presley and Chuck Berry, he is one of the undisputed giants of rock. From the day he recorded Tutti Frutti in 1955, his influence has been enormous. His life has been just as exciting as his music. And we'll talk to him about both tonight. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Little Richard. Richard, how are you? Nice to see you, sir. Thank you very much for being here. In the, uh, the very beginning of the show, I made a statement which uh, I think is a pretty fair one. Uh, let me know what you think of it. If you hadn't come along, or, uh, maybe rock and roll would have started differently or later. Uh, I'm sure it would have started s sooner or later. Uh, um, I, um, I don't believe it would have got started at all. Uh, in, my home t in my hometown, Macon, Georgia, where I'm from, I've never heard any rock and roll music before. It was Swing and Sway with Sammy K when I was a little boy. Yeah, how old were you uh, when you were listening to Sammy K? I really didn't listen to him. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but I had gotten tired of hearing about him. <laughs> and so what I did, I started playing the piano and I made up Tutti Frutti. Mm -hmm. And I started, I sung Tutti Frutti for many years before I recorded it. Yeah. Because everybody thought it was crazy. You know, wah, bah, balloon, bah, balloon, bam, boom. Yeah. Didn't nobody know what it meant, and I didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> and so... I decided that I should have put that on record. Yeah. Uh, you you uh, were in 1957. How long had you been performing as Little Richard at that point? Uh, I had been performing as Little Richard from, um, oh, from a little boy. Yeah. From a little boy, I was singing around Macon, Georgia, beating on the doorsteps. steps. I would go around from house to house and beat on the steps, and people would give me a quarter, right. a dime, uh, 50 cents. But by 1957, you were an established oh, yes, rock and roll yes, entity. Yes, yes. And, and you were touring in Australia? All over the world. And uh, something, what happened in Australia? You just decided, that's it, I'm not going to do it anymore. Well, what happened uh, when I was in Australia, I, then during that period, I stopped and went to school. You know, uh, I've never made this type of money, David. You know, I was making $15 a week in Macon. And all of a sudden, I'm making $10,000 an hour. So I, read, I went back to school to learn how to count to read mm -hmm. because I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. I needed to know how to handle the money. I had a lot of managers that was handling it a whole lot, taking it all, leaving me nothing. I didn't yeah. even know how to count the nothing that they yeah. left. So I went back to school to study. So, uh, it, what, did, but at that time, did you get into religion or was it? Uh... Yes, I, um, well, I've always been religiously in clown. You know, my mother in Macon, Georgia, my mother has 12 kids. And uh, um, I would have to go to church in order to go to the movie. I would have to go to church Sunday morning, the Baptist church, and that evening I would go to the movie. Uh, but I've always loved God. You know, in, in my hometown, if you didn't love God, you didn't have nothing because it was so prejudiced back in that time. You know, uh, I had to uh, do what I was doing in order to survive. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean had to do what you were doing to survive? Uh, well, you know, uh, when I was singing rock and roll, they, at that time, they would call black music, race music, when I sung, sung rock and roll. I was on RSA Victor before Elvis Presley, but they wouldn't put me on RSA. They put me on Camden. So when I would wear makeup, they would let me sing for the white girls. When I put on eyelashes and all mm -hmm. that, they would let me sing. But when I went as a just straight dude, they wouldn't let me sing. Now, now why is that? Well, they thought I wanted the girls. Uh -huh. So if I was came out a straight guy, they wouldn't let me sing. But when I came out with all the makeup on and all the eyelashes and all the hair, they said, Richard is a good boy. I yeah. never was a good man, but I was a good boy. Uh, <laughs> now, who is they that you're talking about here? Uh, uh, some of the whites in Macon, who I'm from, I came from a little town. Yeah. You know, it was real prejudice yeah. back in that time. Now, this is, uh, as I recall, my memory of you is you were a, pe a peculiar appearing performer. You were not uh, the guy running the 7-Eleven. Well, maybe you were, uh, but you looked strange, you know? Well, uh, 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 it was strange because didn't nobody else have nerve enough to wear what I was wearing. Yeah. I believe a lot of people wanted to look like I looked, but they didn't know how to put it on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I think that during that period that there was a lot of people that would love to have been flamboyant, you know, just like Kiss and, and Jimi Hendrix, which was my guitar player. He started mm -hmm. out with me, Billy Preston. James Brown was my vocalist, Otis Redding. Uh, uh, all the Beatles came with me. They started with me, Mick Jagger. Uh, uh, all these people started with me. So you, I mean, uh, now taking another turn here, you really did have a dramatic uh, impact and a great deal of influence on what uh, would later become the mainstays of rock and roll music. I was the architect yeah. of rock. But uh, my other question is, if you were, if you were, had these religious roots, wasn't it kind of a, a, a tearing circumstance for you to be appearing uh, 
in eye makeup and so forth and then also be a devout Baptist? Uh, well, I wasn't. They, the Baptists in those days probably didn't want women wearing makeup, did uh, they? Well, but in those days, uh, some of them didn't know what they was wearing themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 what, what happened is I wasn't really, uh, really a religious person. I, I was a young boy. I, I wanted to be famous so bad, and I really wanted a Cadillac. Uh -huh. Lord, Christ, <laughs> Lord Christ came to my hometown, and he had a long, he had a Cadillac, and so I wanted to sing and get me a Cadillac. I wanted to be famous for one purpose, to get a Cadillac. Just to get the Cadillac. The longest Cadillac in my hometown was owned by the funeral home, and you had to die to ride. Yeah, that, that's no fun getting it that and, way. And yeah. I was determined not to die. All right, we're going to continue with uh, Little Richard. We'll be back in a minute or two, folks. Welcome back. Paul Schaefer. Gentlemen, of course, is Little Richard, and that was, uh, that's one of your songs right there, wasn't it? Yeah, that's one of my, Lucille, that's Lucille. Yeah. And have these songs made you a wealthy, wealthy man? Well, it should have. Mm -hmm. Oh, this your uh, managers again. Uh, oh, my managers are very rich, yeah. sitting yeah. on heels. Some of them falling off of the heels now. Uh -huh. The storms are pushing some of them off. Uh, but uh, I made a lot of money, but I was cheated, I was used, I was exploited. You know, the fella came to Macon, Georgia, and got me and told me he'd make me a star. I wanted to be a star more than I got the money. Yeah. So he's rich. I didn't get rich from it, but... Uh, you're doing okay now, though. I oh, mean, you're not, yeah. uh, God is good to yeah. me. God is a good... I'm not Raven Ike. No, I know that. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 um, but God has been good, you know, because I don't tell people they're going to have no pie in the sky by uh -huh. and by. I've had enough pie down here. When I yeah. go to heaven, I'm just going to be with Jesus. Let me ask you about one thing, and then we have some video tape of you in action uh, when you were a young boy you were tossed out of your own home eh yes how what, what how does this happen well my daddy we had 12 kids my daddy's name is Charles Penniman and we called him Bud but m I wouldn't obey my father I didn't obey my father I didn't do what he wanted me to do and so he told me I had to get out mm -hmm. he said Richard you I want I was gay and, and he says that I wanted seven boys and you are messing it up mm -hmm. <laughs> And my brother's name was Charles, so I would go out in the yard and call him. I had a high voice. I would say, Charles! He said, I'm going to kill you tonight. <laughs> he said, I'm going to kill you because I, I was really flamboyant, so my, my people didn't like it. So my dad said, you either follow this rule or get out. Yeah. So I got out because I wanted to wear all of my stones now, and how my old, How old were you when you hit the road then, when he tossed you out? I was old enough to go in the streets because I had to be, because I had to find a place. My mother didn't want me to go. I was about 17, yeah. 16 and Now, 17. is your father still alive? No, dad is dead. He didn't live to see me, my fame or nothing. And Did so, you ever get this worked out, or was it a, a problem the rest oh, of your life? Oh, no, but God gave me the victory. I, I'm not gay now, but, you know, I was gay all my life. I believe I was one of the first gay people to come out. But God let me know that he made Adam be with Eve, not Steve. <laughs> so, uh, 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 so I just uh, I gave my heart to Christ. But l let me add, that's a, you, see, you keep saying one provocative thing after another. You used to be gay, but now you're not. I'm not. I, I'm a man for the first time in my life. Yeah. I know how you feel now. Uh, this is this is getting more and more fascinating with each new turn. Uh, there is about 90 uh, different things I would like to ask you now. We can't ask you 90 different things. I, I have to ask you this, though. Uh, did you ever uh, one time uh, make Johnny Carson get out of his uh, chair? Yes, I took an, a, a costume on for him to put on, and I told him I wanted to do something I'd never done before, and I ran through the audience, and I told him I've always wanted to host a show, mm -hmm. and I asked him up, and he let me get up. He got up, <laughs> I just seat, and I took his seat. Uh -huh. Yes, I did. I did. Uh, uh, we should, I guess, establish now what you're doing. We, we have uh, mentioned what you have done and uh, what you mean in music history. What are you doing now? Well, I'm an evangelist now, uh, David. I uh, travel over the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and uh, I became a drug addict. I was on heroin. I was uh, uh, angel dust, everything, acid. And uh, my brother, uh, I had four people to die. One night I was appearing at Magic Mountain, and a friend of mine fell dead. I had another friend of mine that I went to his house to get some cocaine. My birthday is December the 5th on my birthday. He fell dead. I had another friend of mine that uh, uh, some fellas put in a trunk and cut him up with a butcher knife. I and Tina Turner had an engagement in, in uh, Miami. And I went in Tina's place, my brother fell dead. And then I made a vow to God that I wanted to do something uh, in his service. And God said, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So I was determined to, 
to give my life to Christ before it's too late because I could be dead. You know, Elvis was a very good friend of mm -hmm. mine, Buddy Holly, Jimi Hendrix, all these people, and God has spared my life. If a person see me, they can see that I am a new creature. If any man be in Christ, God made me all over again. But are you are you a satisfied person now? Are you? Uh, sometimes you don't get the the urge to go back out and crank out some hits and. Uh... No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. I've made a lot of hits, you know, in the past, but I'm happy now because I have peace of mind, that peace that passes all understanding, and it's just peace that, that you can't get nowhere. Hello, Gregory! Hi. <laughs> Gregory's here, apparently. Huh? Uh, there was some speculation that Gregory might not make it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're going to sing this, right, Richard? Yes, I am. One day at a time, day at ladies a time. and gentlemen. Go on over there, if you will, sir. Little Richard singing One Day at a Time.
Subway Fashions and author Jay Robert Knight. Thank you very much, Richard. <laughs>